African Union and through the regional economic communities in, in the African area, and Ambassador Sabana referred particularly to SADC, but we're working with the other regional communities as well. Because African-led changes are the most sustainable, and we're starting to see some recognition that um, unless, um, unless we sort of get rid of these barriers, uh, that, that these countries, particular smaller countries, are not uh, going to be able to benefit and see the incentives that can be that can be developed through trade. Oui, bonsoir à Foi Africa TV. Nous sommes ici à Washington au Winston Center pour la conférence sur l'agriculture. Le thème l'Afrique doit arrêter euh, arrêter la famine en Afrique et cette conférence euh, sera conduite par un panel euh, d'autorités. Euh, nous sommes là donc à Washington pour vous faire suivre la conférence en anglais sur euh, l'agriculture africaine. And really uh, creating uh, mechanisms of accountability that build on years of work and investment by the U.S. government in partnership with other African countries. So I'm, I'm hoping that we can continue to focus on this. Après, dans le Dr. Todd, nous allons écouter d'autres intervenants. La conférence essaie de trouver les solutions sur l'agriculture en Afrique. La conférence en plus aider l'Afrique à à ne plus connaître la famine, à s'autosuffire euh, euh, par l'alimentation. Et le docteur Daniel qui va prendre la parole, qui est représentant des euh, Nations Unies. Our organization started about 10 years ago uh, clamoring for change and uh, increased investments in agriculture and food security. And uh, if you look today and listen to people in government, private sector, civil society, you realize that that has been achieved. Many years ago, I remember there was this film that was uh, made that was titled Africa is Open for Business and a lot of people didn't even pay attention. And um, I think evidence now proves that indeed Africa is in business. And uh, if you don't know this, just ask the Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> business media. I agree with uh, the report. Uh, it highlights a lot of things um, that are going on in Africa, things that need to change. Pour le docteur Daniel, il y a beaucoup de facteurs qui contribuent à l'échec alimentaire en Afrique. Et il dit lui-même qu'il a souligné ces points étant sur place. Euh, et il vient ici là donner quelques propositions de ce qui doit être fait pour améliorer l'agriculture et les conditions alimentaires en Afrique. But we have seen a lot of progress made, and uh, some of it has been because of uh, policy reforms that many countries undertook 15, 20 years ago. Some of them are uh, part of the unpopular donc tout juste dans, après le docteur Daniel, nous avons remarqué euh, une figure qui n'est pas inconnue en Afrique, euh, c'est la politicien Kawala qui était présente sur les lieux et que nous allons écouter son point de vue euh, sur Kawala que nous allons écouter. Feeding Africa is Africans themselves, and that it is important that our countries take the political responsibility to feed their people and to think strategically about agriculture and get across the, the notion that we must produce more and more effectively, we must trade across our borders, 
and very certainly we must get women who are the ones who are producing and who are selling food in Africa to be involved in the policy discussions. Yeah, but we know Kawala, you are not somebody that we can pass by uh, as activist politician in Cameroon. You know you get involved in many activities in our country. Tell us a little bit the improvement of agric uh, agricultural on a uh, woman's size in Cameroon. So, um, agriculture in Cameroon, unfortunately, like most things in Cameroon, I think Cameroon is the typical case of where you do not have political will. And so you have a country with enormous potential. Cameroon has the possibility not only to feed itself, but to help to feed the entire sub-region. And unfortunately, we are not moving forward in agriculture in Cameroon because we, are, we do not have the infrastructure in terms of roads and transportation. We do not have the infrastructure in terms of commercializing our products. And we are certainly not doing the work with our neighbors to facilitate trade. So the Cameroonian farmer, the Cameroonian woman who is farming, and even the Cameroonian market woman is still working against all odds. Luckily, these are very, very very uh, powerful, energetic, and intelligent people, and I think that sooner or later, their government will catch up to them. Yeah, but you just said something there. You said that uh, politicians are not really connected to support the agricultural uh, issue in Africa. Yes. You are a famous politician in Cameroon. We know you represent a party, if you are not mistaken. Yes. On your program as a, a future leader of Africa tomorrow, or as a leader today, because you are head of a, a political party, what do you think you politicians can do to help agricultural uh, in Africa, especially women? Oh, I think that if you look at my political party, the Cameroon People's Party, agriculture is at the center of our economic program. So there must be investment, first of all, in the logistics, farm to market roads, because farmers are producing, at least in Cameroon, and their produce gets rotten on the farm. They are unable to get it to market. Meanwhile, those at the market are buying products at a very, very high price. So the first thing is logistic. The second thing is financing for agriculture, because our farmers farm in very small uh, lots, which is not efficient. So we, they have to increase the land surface in which they farm. For them to do that, they need financing. They need to be able to buy equipment, they need to be able to buy seeds, and so this is very, very important for uh, Cameroonian, Cameroonian farmers. Where the women are concerned, it is important to get Cameroonian women to the policy table, to come and to be able to discuss uh, the policies with regard to investment in farming, with regard to trading, agriculture, and with regard to markets, because markets are a very, very important venue for commercializing agricultural products. Today, our markets have no storage facility, no refrigeration facility, no running water sometimes. So for the Cameroon People's Party, investing in markets to bring them up to a modern standard that will make the market traders much more efficient is also part of our strategy. Yeah, as you present today in Washington, D.C., after this uh, forum, that surely learned you something or that you participate in as well, uh, what is the message are you taking back home to tell to your sister, to tell to the agricultural people, to farmers in Cameroon, if they could ask you, Miss Kawala, you came back from the United States for the conference about agricultural food and stop hunger. What is the message you're bringing back to them? The key message to farmers and to men farmers, women farmers, young farmers is that they have to organize themselves and get their voice heard. The, the, the space for agriculture has already been created. But if farmers are not at the table, if they are not where the decisions are going are being taken, they are going to still be left behind. So for me, it is about getting the farmer's voice to the decision-making table. Thank you, Ms. Kawala. We want to tell you first from Afro-African TV uh, fans 
anyone that don't follow this video that you are a very, very uh, example as a woman in Africa. We follow you, we know what you are doing there. Keep it up. Know that uh, at least you are playing on the positive game from women and the progress development tomorrow from Africa. Thank you for giving us your time and uh, we wish you a good well back home. Thank you. Voilà, qui est politicienne, leader au Cameroun, qui a essayé de brosser la, hein, la situation selon laquelle elle, euh, elle trouve que d'abord, il faudrait que les politiciens en Afrique et au Cameroun se penchent beaucoup plus dans le, euh, sur le côté agricole. Elle a pointé quelques problèmes hein, qui font faillite à l'agriculture en Afrique. Elle a parlé de l'eau, euh, des infrastructures, du manque d'organisation. Elle a dit qu'il fallait aider les agriculteurs à, à commercialiser leurs produits. Et elle a dit que le problème majeur, il faut les aider dans les financements. En plus, elle a dit qu'il faudrait que les politiciens euh, appellent sur la table hein, les participants euh, pour discuter des problèmes agricoles et les aider à mieux euh, commercialiser leurs produits. Euh, nous avons demandé le message qui est ramené aujourd'hui. Elle dit qu'il faut d'abord que les, les agriculteurs au Cameroun euh, et en Afrique euh, s'organisent d'abord entre eux afin qu'ils fassent écouter leur voix sinon ils seront oubliés c'est en bref ce que venait dire Kawala en anglais tout à l'heure euh, la leader politicienne qui était sur les lieux nous allons continuer la conférence avec M. Marcelo euh, Jouguel at integrating with the rest of the world through the commodity trade, selling minerals, China, oil, gas, that integrates you with the rest of the world. But it has been a failure in integrating with itself. Now you may say, so what? As long as money comes in, that's fine. The thing is that the globalization of Africa has not created the jobs and ultimately the poverty reduction. Africa needs. Those two will come from integration with itself. And what you heard today about food integration, food market integration, is even worse when you speak about service integration. And by service, I don't just mean the teachers in Kenya, which are in oversupply, cannot go to Tanzania, where they are undersupply, or accountants in Ghana, which I'm told are very good, cannot operate anywhere else in West Africa, where there is a shortage of them. It's also true about trucking probably the most important logistics now impairing commerce in Africa. It's also true about finance, where you cannot really operate from one country to the other without very country-specific requirements that make it impossible to trade in capital. So what is true for food is true for service. It's also true for perhaps the one genial idea that made Southeast Asia so successful, and is the idea that the production chain can be split vertically and components of the final product can be produced in different countries. So when you buy a car here in the US, you're probably buying pieces from 17 or 18 countries. The computer controlled, continuously shifting gearbox is still made in Japan, but the tires are probably made in Vietnam. So countries can attach themselves to the production process at the level of technology they are capable of. That's perfect for Africa, and for Africa capturing, or beginning to capture, Some of what we calculate are 18 million jobs that China has to share over the next 10 years. That ain't going to happen when Africa cannot trade with itself. There's no one single country that can incorporate all these components into a final product of manufacture. So that's the first message. The integration with itself, this job and poverty agenda, is the one that has remained unattended. And the second message, if I may, is very much along the, the lines of what our colleagues were saying. We know what the problem is. We know what the problem is. And so far, we acted only on half of the problem, which is relatively, relatively speaking, the easy half, and is the tariff barriers. You can sign a free trade agreement, and in paper, your tariff, your import tariffs, go down. You may be a member now of the custom union, which supposedly allows products to go in and out at zero additional tax due to origin. That's half of the problem. That's where we acted quickly, and that's where the politics have been welcome. Free trade agreements are good for photo ops. 
<laughs> Ron Havak is in the non-tariff barrier. Oui, M. Marcelo, lui, donne un peu une, une expertise hein, de l'agriculture en Afrique, des problèmes agricoles, de comment euh, elles peuvent être améliorées. Euh, il parle du problème des prix, euh, de commercialisation, il parle de beaucoup de facteurs qui rentrent en considération pour... Euh, améliorer l'agriculture en Afrique et les conditions agricoles. Il fait une, une large expertise là de, des problèmes de l'agriculture en Afrique. Et comment euh, les ressources naturelles peuvent être euh, aménagées et gérées en Afrique pour aider le continent. Comment les, les politiciens peuvent rentrer dans le jeu pour améliorer les conditions agricoles et l'alimentation et parle du problème du chômage hein, aussi qui est un problème très important dans ce secteur I finish with one small point now, and it's the following. This agenda, particularly the food agenda, or the food integration agenda, the food market integration agenda, is not just about poverty and about food security. To me, it's about gender. And we didn't have the time to, I will recommend that you go to the website indicated at the back of the report, where you will find other reports, particularly this one called Defragmenting Africa. And this other report, there is some statistics that, you know, as a father of a daughter, uh, I worry about. Donc après, dans son intervention, nous allons ouvrir une série de questions-réponses avec plusieurs intervenants ici. Euh, la conférence, en fait, c'est un moyen de trouver, euh, d'abord de parler du problème de l'agriculture, des problèmes de l'alimentation et de trouver les les éventuelles propositions, comment en Afrique, euh, ce secteur peut être amélioré pour que la population soit bien nuisance alimentaire. Et la première question, nous allons la prendre de Kamala, euh, la politicienne camerounaise, qui vient de nous prendre la parole tout à l'heure. Uh, governance and political will. I think this is, you can't get around it. You absolutely have to have the governance and political will. It is impossible to bring people together regionally who do not have the political will to implement agricultural policies within their own countries. They cannot think uh, uh, strategically. And I think that it is important Um, for international organizations like the World Bank, for uh, partner countries like USAID, to hold African countries accountable at the governance level. You mentioned CADAP, which is the Comprehensive Afri Agriculture African Development Program. It was signed in 2003. Every country signed it, 54 countries. They were supposed to commit 10% of their annual budgets in order to get 6% of agricultural growth per year. There are not up to 10 countries that have met the minimum obligations of what they signed in CADAP. Let's be serious. I think this issue of political will has to be addressed. We can dance around it. It's only when you have the political will that you begin to address the problems of corruption and tariff and um, Uh, uh, the, the issues such as, as, as rape for gender. So I think it's, it's, it's a difficult issue for sure, and a lot of us Africans start shouting about you know, getting into our uh, 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 political rights when, when international organizations and partner countries do that, but I do think that there are ways to address it, especially when we make commitments. We need to be able to keep uh, those commitments and show, show the will before we begin to deal with others. And my last uh, question, uh, point was on gender. I'm glad that you uh, said it's in the report, but I hope that it, we are talking about women 
being entirely, the, the actors in the agricultural value chain from production to commercialization is about 70% of farmers and about 80% of farmers are women. Il y a quelque chose de très important ici. Elle a d'abord donné un bref résumé de ce qu'elle pensait du sujet et elle a dit que pour elle, il n'y a pas de raison que les politiciens ne soient pas involvés, qu'il y a 54 euh, pays qui ont signé hein, pour euh, le problème agricole en Afrique et que 10% de ces gens-là n'ont même pas déjà pris la responsabilité. Euh, elle a parlé quelque chose de très important ici euh, que la, la table a apprécié et c'est le vertu des de, de questions reprises. In the 1980s and onward, and countries are told they can't invest in food because they will upset the so-called international markets. And Malawi was a good example of breaking that decision by the WTO. When food can be grown, water, energy, these are key. Rail transportation. If credits were made by the financial institutions, which they have not been, for long-term credit. For these industries, we would grow food. If the WTO did not prevent countries from doing this, we would grow food. So this, this and globalization, where Kenyan farmers make more money selling flowers to Europeans for perfume, is a joke. And selling food cheap to the United States is a joke. We don't want cheap food. We want food to feed the African population, which they can do if they were given minimal assistance, and that is being blocked, in my opinion. There is absolutely not one valid reason lui qui fait un peu faire une autocritique hein, de la chose, pour lui, euh, quand on voit le Kenya vendre des fleurs à l'Europe pour faire des parfums, il dit que c'est une blague. Il dit que l'Amérique, euh, il condamne le fait que l'Amérique vend la nourriture moins chère. Pour lui, ce n'est pas acceptable. Il dit qu'il faut que les, les pays africains, quand on les donne les possibilités de pouvoir cultiver de tout et de s'auto-situer alimentairement. Et ça, c'est quelqu'un qui vient du Ghana. Et qui vient pointer aussi le problème euh, de, euh, de l'énergie, du carburant et tout. Pour lui, il dit que euh, les agriculteurs aujourd'hui ont commencé à abandonner les champs pour se pencher euh, pour le problème de gaz et lui, parce que c'est là-bas que ça paye. C'est un peu le point de vue qu'il apporte ici sur la table. 8% as a result of our oil find and oil production. How do we address that situation? Because now oil is giving us much more money than a Greek and the farmers are like, well, then we can stop farming and try to do something around oil. Um, it's something we must tackle. And then still on oil and gas, um, the international Uh, 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 oil firms, they, they don't get, they don't buy our food, they don't buy food from the locals, they import everything, cabbages, carrots, yet when they visit our hotels, they eat food. Oui, il pointe aussi là le problème des étrangers qui viennent au Ghana chez lui. Ils disent que vraiment, ils importent toute la nourriture qu'ils consomment au Ghana, de la nourriture. Et pour lui, euh, ça n'aide pas pour le problème de la nourriture en Afrique. Um, I have two things I'd like to say. First is one, a brief announcement that in the project I just spoke about in West Africa, we are having a food across borders uh, on January, which is intended to bring together the private sector, public sector under USAID and ECOWAS sponsorship to discuss the policy enabling environment issues related to better trade uh, movement of af uh, agricultural goods across borders and bringing decision makers as well as populations involved in trade and production to have a dialogue about how to deal with this. And to me, I think the issue that most needs to be dealt with is this one of political will. And it's not just saying political will. What are the incentives for people that we are building into the system to enable them to change their behaviors, to change the policies. You can't have changes in political will without 
the right incentives being there. That includes with the private sector. What incentives are there for the private sector to go out to rural areas, collect agricultural goods if the roads are bad, the borders are corrupt, and so on? What are the incentives for government uh, personnel to reduce, eliminate tariffs, to get at some of these standardization issue, standards issues? <coughs> Aflatoxin is a big issue right now. That's you know rearing its head for putting in other barriers to trade, but it's a big one that needs to be dealt with. And so to me, that you can't just say political will. You have to say, what are the incentives for behavior change in all of these different areas? I thought I heard the vice president. Oui, euh, cette dame elle pense que le tout c'est pas de dire que la politique doit être involved, mais qu'il faut aussi changer les mentalités euh, en Afrique pour aider le problème de l'agriculture et de l'alimentation à être. Euh, donc pour elle, euh, elle, elle va faire une conférence au Ghana sur l'agriculture et l'alimentation, mais elle juge que le tout c'est pas que les politiciens rentrent dans euh, le, le l'action à l'action, mais qu'il va, il va falloir que les mentalités, même en Afrique, hein, soient changées pour aider l'agriculture à se développer. Nous allons donc prendre les réponses ici de la question et ça sera petit à petit la fin de cette conférence qui a eu lieu ici à Washington, d'ici. L'Afrique devra arrêter de souffrir. Développement de l'agriculture et entrer en jeu des potentiels acteurs politiques, financiers, énergétiques et climatiques. C'était dans la, le but de cette conférence. Nous allons dire merci déjà hein, à l'organisation africaine qui est à l'organisation de toutes ces conférences. Et merci à ceux qui ont participé. To be on top of this. And Ghana is a pioneer, by the way. You saw the new oil uh, revenue monitoring law brings civil society to this. No? So the more monitoring and watch um, watchdogs we put along the expenditure line, the less chance that we will fall into the Dutch disease. It's not something you can say the central bank will take care of. It's more than technical. Um, just a quick comment about political will. I, th I think there has to be a system of holding people accountable, um, holding them to their word and action. And I, th I think this idea of CADAC and peer review mechanism was a good start, but a lot of that fizzled. And, and I believe that um, there has to be an incentive structure. Uh, there has to be some attraction to change. And I think a better analysis that goes down deeper than just at the country level and outlines, you know, what change is needed, but then what's the outcome of that change? So people can see what they are losing by not changing. And it's not just giving these reports to the politicians, which is very common. It's being able to engage communities, as a lady was saying there, people at the grassroots level to discuss these issues with their leaders and then determine the next steps that are needed. And I hope the World Bank will take this to the people, not just to the leaders. Yeah, I, I also feel like we don't have great answers yet, but I think that is, is part of it, uh, that uh, people need to be able to speak up and leaders need, leaders need to be held accountable by, by their populations. Um, For USAID, uh, you know, a, an approval of a CADA compact and uh, an investment plan, our requirements for will be required continue. for private sector, those investors will fully commit to their
to their uh, to those plans to invest in the country. So we're, we're making some efforts. Uh, it, it is a continued effort, and I think ultimately it really is about accountability associated with uh, the people in the country. Thank you. Ambassador the last word. Thank you. Um, just to say that uh, I'm very glad that we had this uh, conversation, let me say. And um, I agree with what the colleagues have said. But I'd like also to stress that uh, the involvement of the uh, communities, the civil society, women in particular, it's very important. Madame l'ambassadrice qui ferme dans le bal de celle questionnaire réponse et qui trouve que la femme est très importante quand on parle des problèmes agricoles parce que elle elle regorge quand même une bonne partie hein, des agriculteurs en Afrique et de celles qui participent pour la bonne alimentation en Afrique. C'était dans tout après mon Afrique qui dit merci de nous avoir commenté une fois de plus. Nous vous retrouvons pour une autre fois. Du tout et plein, vous le savez maintenant. Au revoir.